So as we work with the ringing circuit, which is our RLC circuit. Uh, the major part there, guys, is just on the frequencies. Uh, do not worry much. Like, what is happening there? No. Okay, just go through your theory. But what is the most important part is our resonance. Remember, as we talk of uh, uh, the capacitive and inductive circuits, we end up having the resonance just like what we saw guys in our n3 n4 we talk of the uh, resonance so the major part there uh on the resonance is in our syllabus uh for n6 we're going to talk of the resonant frequency they need you to understand calculating of the resonant frequency so we're going to talk of the resonant uh frequency okay so we've got the resonant uh frequency in that case, I'm just going to write this as FR, representing our resonant frequency. Remember that in our N3, N3 actually started from N2. Yes, when we say that at resonance, the reactance of the inductor is equal to the reactance of the capacitor. And from there, using the formula, we can even manipulate finding that reactance. Remember, XL is given by what? The reactance uh, is 2 pi FL. And that of the capacitor is given as 1 over 2 pi Fc. So you are going to notice that with our calculations, we can end up having uh, the value of the frequency, which is the resonant frequency at resonance, which is when these two are equal. Okay, this is same as over 1. So you're going to cross multiply the 2. That is going to be 4. Pi and pi is going to be pi squared. If you multiply there, this will be pi squared, f and f. Uh, this is going to give us f squared, l and c. This is going to give us lc, which is equal to 1 times 1, which is 1. Remember, what you need is f, so you can divide by 4 pi squared lc. So I'm going to say f squared is equal to 1 over 1. Divide by 4 uh, pi squared lc. With this, you can introduce the square to determine uh, F. So the square root there was allowing us to determine the square root of all terms that you have a power of two or those numbers that we do know our uh, their square roots, like square root of one, we do understand this one. The square root of four, it's two. The square root of pi squared, it's pi. But we do not know the square root of LC. So it will be square root of LC. We do not know that. So this is the resonant frequency, the frequency at resonant, remember, when these two, they are equal. So it's not like they're going to ask you, like, uh, formulate that formula, this and that. No, just case for you to understand, but we talked about this even in our info. This is just a recap uh, for you to understand uh, this part. So our resonant frequency, it's another part that you will need, and we saw that uh, from our Calculations, uh, the resonant frequency can be obtained as 1 over 2 pi, uh, the square root of LC. So this is our resonant frequency measured in hertz. Number two, it is the natural frequency of oscillation of our LC circuit. The natural frequency. So they'll ask you about the natural uh, frequency. Okay, the natural frequency of uh, oscillation. The natural frequency of oscillation of RLC circuit. If you are to consider an RLC circuit, the, this one uh, is going to be given as Fn. The natural frequency is given by the formula Fn. And Fn is taken from 1 over 2 pi the square root of 1 over LC minus R squared over 4 L squared. So other textbook, this part of R squared over 4 L squared, they can write it as R over 2 L squared. So guys, R squared is R squared. Four, uh, 2 squared is 4 L raised to the power of 2 is L squared. So yeah, we can just write it like that. Or you can, depends with the textbook that you are using. So Fn representing our natural frequency is supposed to be less than, it is supposed to be less than the frequency at resonant. 
Fn is supposed to be less than the frequency that is at resonance in a normal consideration. All right, then we also just going to talk about the other formulas that you need from the Fn formula, from the natural frequency formula. We're going to talk of the damping part. It is taken from the natural uh, frequency formula. That's another part which is important, actually, uh, that you need in your consideration, the part of damping. From the Fn formula, we're going to focus with this part from our Fn formula. This is the part that you focus with. So the first condition of our damping, it can be a condition where it is critically damped. Whenever they talk about this, that uh, something happened and it's critically damped. What is the condition that you use? When it is critically damped, these two will be equal. One over LC, the first fraction, will be equal to the second fraction of uh, R squared over 4 L squared. These two will be equal when it is critically damped. So they can uh, give you a condition like this. It is critically damped. Calculate the value of the inductance. Calculate the value of the capacity. They will give you resistance value. You can calculate any one of these. They can give you resistance and capacitance. They will ask you to calculate L. They will give you resistance and maybe capacity. Uh, and this inductance, they will ask you to calculate the capacity depending on the question. So you can make L the subject. So let's just see this, uh, making L the subject, because they will need you to do that. So if you make L the subject, what's going to happen? This is 1 over LC equal to uh, R squared over 4 L squared. If we make L the subject, we are going to cross multiply. That means we are going to have 1 times 4 L squared, which is 4 L squared equal to uh, the LC multiplies R squared, so it's R squared LC. So looking into this, we can see, guys, there is L here. There is also L here. There are two of them. How can we get rid of one? We can divide this. Divide this, meaning say we're going to have 4L in that case on the left-hand side. So 4L is equal to R squared C. What is it that we need? We need the value of L. Remember, we need to make L the subject, so we can divide by 4. We can divide by four both sides. So meaning to say from these hands, from this, L is equal to what? R squared C over what? Over four. They can ask you to calculate the inductance in that condition when it is critically damped. Knowing that the two are equal, you have to make the subject. So you end up with your L that way. The same thing with your C, you can make it the subject. When it is critically damped, 1 over LC is equal to R squared over 4 L squared. Let's make C the subject. From this, let's make C the subject. So you're going to cross multiply just like the previous case. Cross multiply. So it means it's 1 times 4 L squared. Okay, or we're just going to more sense in one C. Let's just take this one. So it's going to be LC R squared is equal to multiply this side. We are going to have 4 L squared. Remember, 1 C. So we're going to divide by L R squared both sides. L R squared both sides. L R squared both sides. So this can cancel. You remain with the C from there. But as you can see on the right-hand side, the L and the L also can cancel. There's an L here. There's another L here. So you can cancel and remain with one L on top. That is the condition. You remain with one L. So meaning to say the C here that we want here can be also made the subject. So C will be given as 4L over R squared. So this is 4L over what? Over R squared. If you can know this, it's fine. But knowing also making the subject, guys, you can have it there. I'm just making the subject because when you're answering question papers, guys, I'll be, I'll be saying, remember that, remember that. So you must remember that uh, where we made the subject. Uh, anyway, so this is the condition of a critically damned condition. When it is critically damned, 
It can be overdumped. It can be overdumped. In that case, the R squared over 4L squared will be greater than this. So it's going to be R squared over 4L squared is greater than 1 over LC. If we calculate that, it must be bigger than this. In that case, you know that it is over damped or it can be under damped. In that case, it's going to be less than. The R squared uh, over 4L squared, the one that we're using this one before, uh, over 4L squared, this time it will be less than 1 over LC. As we can see, this R squared over 4L squared, 1 over LC, guys, everything is taken from our natural frequency formula. This part that is under the square root here is the one that brings a comparison at damping conditions. Is it critically damped? Is it over damped? Is it under damped? You can tell by the answers that you are getting. So they can take advantage of being critically damped because they know that the two, they are exactly equal. So they form questions from there, such as finding inductance, such as finding capacitance. So this is what you need to expect as you are working with your question papers. So we're going to see typical questions. And as we are revising how questions will be given and how are you supposed to attempt those questions using this information that we had uh, from our frequencies. That is the resonant frequency and the natural frequency up to the damping of these circuits.